What's up guys, Mr. Javid, and today we are back. I promise I'll make this one shorter. Uh, I'm going to be answering uh, the third question this week. Again, guys, if you have any questions, leave them either in the description down, or comment section down below or in the community on the community post that I originally asked. And so we are three days in. This is going to be your second double upload day. Um, and just like I hope, the right people are hearing the videos just when they need it. And... I know they're not going to be the most <coughs> the most viewed and popular and whatnot, but um, I don't think that's any reason for the 20 people who may need to hear that video to not hear it because I know it's not going to be popular or mess up the algorithm or some shit. So um, I'm sure it'll all work out. Um, but yeah, question comes from T. I was trying to see if it maybe meant something. T. Ader. Um, Tater, Tater. I think Tater is what he meant there. Tater. Discussion about off meta and their place in team building. Well, Tater, it's not really a question, but I think I know what you're saying. What place does off meta uh, mons? And so let's, if for something to be off meta, we must first understand what a meta game is, right? Um, a meta game ultimately. Let's go down right here. Okay. So let's take. Let's take, because um, a metagame and a tier isn't quite the same thing, right? They're close, but they're not exactly the same. So let's take the OU tier right here. We have a Barraskuta, which is RU actually. So it's not a good example. Let's use Bisharp, right? So Bisharp exists within the metagame, and the metagame exists within the tier. So not everything in the tier might be you like have high usage within that particular metagame and so let's explain a metagame a metagame is the interaction between pokemon um, and the effects they have on each other so let's say that heatran is something that matches up well defensively versus a lot of pokemon right um you may see a lot of heatran and a lot of teams and so if you're seeing heatran and a lot of teams and you're having a lot of victory with your Heatran. Well, let's let's start over. Let's say that you have a Heatran, right? And it is within the OU tier. If Heatran is something that is effective versus most of the Pokemon that you tend to run into, then more and more people will use it. And if more and more people use it, then more and more people will want to find a way to defeat it. And so if more and more people try to find a way to, <coughs> excuse me, to defeat it, then whatever they come up with to defeat it, people are going to react to that. And whatever solution they come up to that thing, they're going to react to that and react to that and react to that. And so metagames evolve from that standpoint. So every Pokemon is having an effect on the other Pokemon, right? On the rest of the Pokemon that are common in the tier. So for example, Lander Steering has been one of the most common Pokemon. Why? Because it's, it's ease of use and its ability to almost guarantee that you'll get something out of it, no matter what team you put it on, no matter what style, no matter what. It, it generally is gonna ensure that you get something out of it whereas some pokemon work better on other teams on very specified builds so for example you may bisharp may be ou but bisharp may be poor on very defensive style of teams because a defensive style of teams goal is to preserve value whereas bisharp's goal is to take value and you can see by its stats right very poor defensive stats and HP. Defense is decent, it's actually not bad, um, but it's still not great at taking hits. Not great defensive typing, all that stuff. And so um, you're generally gonna find Bisharp on a team focused on taking value, and that's known as offense. Now, back to a metagame. Let's say that a meta. I don't know why my, it's their lag, okay. It's a sl sorry about the slight lag. But I guess you don't need to screen for this part. But let's say that a metagame 
a metagame is the interaction between the Pokemon within it. So now that we've understand what a metagame is, standard Pokemon are Pokemon you see often within a metagame. So for example, by usage, I think to be OU, you have to be, I think, used 4.5% of the time or something like that. Um, by usage, Zero Aura is classified as OU. However, Zero Aura is still relatively uncommon, right? It's not seen as often as, say, you would see a Ferrothorn or a Corviknight. So even though they're in the same tier, depending on how the metagame is going, depending on what Pokemon are being used most often, they'll fluctuate in who gets used a lot. There are periods in a metagame where Hydreigon has really high usage. There are periods where it has really low usage. There are periods where Kartana has really high usage. There are periods when it has really low usage. And what determines the usage? How many people are using things that defeat Kartana easily? So if very few people are using things that defeat Kartana easily, it will be high in usage because, you know, people can't really deal with it. If a lot of counters are around Kartana, then it's not as effective as it used to be. And so people stop using it as often. And so where off meta picks and off meta means generally it's going to be out of the tier so generally if you say off meta is not going to be within OU though that's not always true um but off meta simply means that it's not popular it doesn't have high usage within the current meta game and so when you're thinking about uh i want to add something unique to my team it has to serve a purpose versus the things that are common in the meta game so for example and this is one that happens often throughout the generations. For example, let's say that rain was very common, right? Rain's just 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 going crazy, right? And let's <coughs> excuse me. And let's say you're like, okay, I want something that can deal with Barrascuta, deal with Kingdra, which are two of the heaviest rain hitters, deal with Seismitoad if I need to. Um what's another common rain water type? Um, yeah, let's just assume those for now, you know, like, uh, I feel like there's a very obvious one I'm forgetting, but that's besides the point, right? And you're like, ah, what do I do to solve this? First, most players will look in the OU tier. Now, depending on your team synergy, you might not find anything that works the way you want. And so you may have to go to lower tiers to find your solution, right? Depending on your team structure, it might be a, where is it? might be a mantine right let's just throw some mons out maybe a mantine right you're like okay mantine has water absorb so barrascuta can't flip turn it walls barrascuta um it has recovery with roost right it, it can check kingdra because of its super high special defense look how high that special defense is without investment right look how high 416 special defense and solid hp Solid HP stat, right? Why isn't it moving? Did I move the... Okay. Anyway, uh, 252, okay. And solid HP stat. I don't know why that wasn't moving, right? And so you may say, oh, Mantine. And you may find that Mantine does well versus things that you didn't even have it on the team for. So it may perform well versus, say, Volcarona, right? Does pretty well versus Volcarona. Does pretty well versus our Shifu. Rapid Strike, right? Walls that... Um, resist bolts and stabs and all that stuff um, It may perform well versus You know some other stuff right scissor things of that nature, right? It's not on the team to counter every mind, but you may have benefits beyond the things that you initially assumed so That's an example That's an example of a defensive metagame pick. Let's use an example of an offensive metagame pick Let's say you're like, huh, you know, everybody's using uh, Landorus, Slow King, some form of a Slow King, and a Zapdos. Like, let's say in Ferrothorn, right? That's their core. You may write down common cores and say, okay, what what Pokemon that's not super common would destroy that core, right? 
And so you may end up going and finding something unique in the lower tiers like a Zarud. Zarud was a very cool off meta game pick when Zygarde was around because it has um it it Zygarde would only run ground moves, thousand arrows for the most part, and it would run coil. Zy um Zarud was almost the perfect mon for it. Two reasons. Jungle healing. Well, three reasons. Jungle healing. So Zygarde would like to coil. And once it starts coiling, it's very difficult to KO. And it would glare you if you were faster than it. And then it would beat you. Right? It would power hacks and bulkiness. It was very difficult to beat. So this Pokemon has jungle healing, which heals health and removes the glare status. Also had bulk up. So it could bulk up alongside Zygarde, but if that was not enough, it had Darkest Lariat, which ignores stat changes. So no matter how much it coils and bulks up and boosts its defense, Dark Lariat attacks it as if it has no defense boost. So this combination, and then it would run Power Whip, right? This combination right here made it one of the best Zygarde, if not the best Zygarde counter in the game um, at the time, right? And even in Ubers, it does the same thing. And so, um, that's an example of an off meta game pick um, coming about. So it's really about identifying first what is in meta game, and then when you go off meta game, so to speak, it has to be something that easily defeats things that are common in the on meta game. Um, and you can get real creative with that. That's one of the upsides about mines, right? It could be a dang choice scarf. The Heligo, because nobody's running the Heligo countered, right? It could be a Celestila, it could be a Choice Scarf Diggersby, right? It, you don't know, like Thunderous, Mamoswine, Conk, right? And because metagames shift, something, as we described, that was good may not be as good anymore because everybody's running counters to it. And so that may create a little bit of a gap for you to slide in and, wow. <laughs> That's, that's, I could have said that differently. Um, but, you know, it may create a gap where you can find your niche with that off metagame pick. And so that's pretty much it. I'll go more in depth with team builders. But if you want more in depth, there's also team building vids on the channel. So definitely go check that out. Um, and yeah, it's going to wrap it up. Try to keep it under 10, but it's not as long as the rest. We're getting better. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.